Show Raiders left tackle Colt Miller some love on Instagram. Give him a follow at Colton underscore Miller. Coming up here on the Raiders Report, I interview Raiders left tackle Colton Miller. I asked him a handful of questions, some serious, some also joking. Also, before you just see it, I know some people have already seen the pictures out there on Instagram or on Twitter. He's a really big dude. There's no doubt about it. He absolutely dwarfs me, and hopefully you don't laugh at me too hard, but uh, here we go. Let's get into the interview right now. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. I'm here with Colton Miller, left tackle of the Raiders, and I'm going to answer him or ask him some questions here. As you can tell, very, very big guy. So when you were drafted by the Raiders all the way back in 2018, what was the feeling like hearing your name, Colton Miller, 15th overall pick out of UCLA? It was, it was overwhelming. It, it felt like you're, I was the 15th pick, um, and it just felt like forever. It felt like I was waiting the whole day to, to get my name called. Um, I had my family there next to me. It was when my that phone finally rang. Man, it was unbelievable feeling for sure. So the left side of the offensive line, there's this guy named Colt Miller. I think he's got it on lockdown. Very very solid player. The right side of the line though is definitely a major concern for a lot of Raiders fans. If you had to predict who's going to be the right tackle this season, ooh, that's going to be tough. There's I feel like we have a lot of young guys, um, a lot of competition. Uh, I really can't say. It's a tough one. Can't say? I can't say. All right, so Raider Nation, I'm going to ask you guys, who's going to be the right tackle for the Raiders? Alex Leatherwood is going to be Brandon Parker, Jermaine Illuminor. Let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comments. You're a UCLA guy. Would you like the college football program to expand from four teams in the playoffs? Would you like them to go to eight? Because the Pac-12 is not getting a lot of love right now. No, it's not. Well, I feel with the uh, NILs, it's... It's changing recruiting, it's changing really everything. Um, you know, how does competition change, you know, when uh, school is less of a uh, selling point now, now it's like, okay, how much can we get paid, this and that. So uh, I really want to see, like, is there going to be like a new structure for, like, are, are we going to start breaking up conferences? Like, I want to see how that, how that really changes things. My next question is going to be around quarterback Derek Carr. You protect his blind side. It's a big responsibility. I want an embarrassing story of Derek Carr. If you can't give me one, my rules on my show is I gotta do a I gotta do a shot of fireball. If you can give me just one embarrassing story about DC. An something. Embarrassing story of DC. Or maybe an inside joke, something maybe I can get him with. <laughs> is there something Bro, DC's so clean. I can't say anything bad about the guy. Really? I really can't. Nothing. I really can't. Nothing. Under wraps. Oh, I'm sorry. Man. See, that's that's the ultimate car insurance right there. That one <laughs> that hurts me a little bit. My final question is this: Max Crosby, big UFC guy, huge. So you and Max, I'm sure you go up against each other once in a while. You and Max in a UFC cage fight. Who's coming out on top? Ooh. Okay. See, I've Max is boxing too. We have these boxing matches. He's going there every week. I, That'd be a tough one. It'd be a real, it'd be close. I need an answer. You didn't give me an answer on DC. You were Max. Who's I think, I think it'd be a good fight. I think it'd be a good fight. It wouldn't be. Max, I think you won. That's all I'm no, here. I'm here. Oh, come on. It would, it would have to be, it had to come down to a decision. All right. Yeah. Well, it's a unanimous on my part. Crosby, you win. Colin, thank you for joining the Raiders report. He's out. Seriously, thank you. Thanks, man. Yo. Like the video to show Colt Miller some love. He took his time out of his day to not only come to the charity event, but also answer some questions. He's a Raiders player that not only looks like he can do my taxes, but also dunk a basketball. Major shout out to him, and we're doing a competition. So I'm going to show Miller, Kendall, Hankins, and Andre which player got the most likes on their YouTube video here on the Raiders Report. So coming up here, not only did I break down this whole interview with Miller, we're going to be looking at could Cohen take that next step? Could he be the NFL's best 
left tackle. I'm going to give you a solid argument for it because he deserves to be in that conversation. Before I give you those five, four reasons coming up, here, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications because the Raiders report is making videos every single day. In fact, I have dropped a video on this channel every day for the last three years, probably going on four years at this point. Let's get to 115,000 subscribers. And if you're like, you know what, Mitch, it's the off season. Why else should I hit that sub button? Well, not only do we go live, player interviews. Andre James, Colt Miller, Kendall Vickers, Jonathan Hankins, they're on the channel. So please go check them out. First off, Let's put Colton in this conversation because I see some eye rolls out there when I say that Miller deserves to be in the conversation of the best left tackle in the NFL. He's coming off a career year. He played in the six most snaps as any offensive tackle with 1,139 last year. He allowed five penalties, four sacks allowed, five hits, which I actually think is pretty good considering the fact of all the different we'll call them formations or all the different left guard center combos that the Raiders had last season. And then when you look at his PFF grades, an 85.0, pass blocking grade of 84.4, the run blocking grade of 76.3. So when you talk about that, he's already, I think, a top five offensive tackle. And PFF, they do a lot of things out there, which some of their grades I agree with. Some of the grades I don't 100% agree with. I have always liked PFF's offensive line grades, and according to them, Miller was a top five offensive tackle last season with an 85 overall grade. Andrew Whitworth at 87.2, he retired. Jordan Malata, 88.3. Tyron Smith, 90.2. And then Trent Williams, just 96.6 at age, what, 38 at this point. Huh? He, he's getting up there in age, however old he is but already a top five offensive tackle. When I've looked at his tape, you can tell that he's gotten better every single season. He's a hard worker. He learns very quickly. And from the moment he has stepped onto that field, which when he was a rookie in 2018, he battled a lot of injuries, which is definitely one of the reasons why he struggled. But in 2018, he had a 49.6 PFF grade. Then in 2019, goes up to 65.0. 2020, 73.0. 2021, 85.0. So I decided to crunch some math here and do my best. He is essentially improved by 11.8 grade points from PFF every single season. It's obviously hard to sit up here and say that's going to happen again because if it does happen again, he would be at 96.8, which I believe if my research is correct, that would be the highest graded offensive tackle ever, ever recorded by PFF. What I am trying to say is this, though. I do see Colton improving, and if he can improve on what he did last season, and if the Raiders' offensive line can be a little bit better this season, then he should be better and then deserve to be potentially the number one overall offensive tackle. The final reason is this, coaching. Carmen Brasillo is better than Tom Cable. Hell, I think a lot of people out there are better than Tom Cable. And not only should Brasillo help Miller take that next step, I'm hoping he helps Denzel Good, John Simpson, Andre James, maybe Dylan Parham, Brandon Parker, Alex Leatherwood, Lester Cotton, whoever the hell is out there for the line. If the rest of the pieces are playing well, and there's a lot of continuity there, that also helps Colt Miller improve. So what do you think here, y'all? Why for yes and for no, can Colton Miller be the NFL's best left tackle. Hopefully in this video I convinced you that there is definitely a possibility.